If you live in a place that gets wintry weather, you know the magic of a snow day. You toss on your comfy clothes because you don't care what you look like, you scramble to buy necessities before the stores close down, and your Florida friends make fun of you on Snapchat. I'm sorry, Mr. Mobile, but I can't hear you with all the sunshine out here. It's all fun and games until the power goes out, and you need to keep your gadgets online for work or play or just plain safety. Here's a handful of tips to keep you connected, or at least entertained, during a blizzard. Let's start with the most obvious thing, battery packs. These are so widespread now that you probably already have one, and if you don't, then you can find one at your corner store. Those will tend to be the single-use disposable type, but if you want something that'll last lots of charge cycles, I've got a whole video on helping you choose the most practical power pack. And also a video on a thoroughly impractical battery for most folks. But whichever one you choose, keep in mind that lithium ion batteries are temperamental little boxes of chemicals, and you need to treat them right if you want them to be there for you during a crisis. So if you store batteries for a long time without using them, keep them at a moderate temperature. That means not in your sun-baked or frozen car, if you can help it. Batteries like to be stored around 60 degrees Fahrenheit, or 15 degrees Celsius. And this is important too. Don't store them fully charged. It's healthier to keep them at a little under half charge if you're not going to use them for a while. Of course, that means that when a storm is coming, you need to remember to charge them up ahead of time. Plug in all your devices and all your battery packs. If the power goes out, your phone will likely still get service. Cell sites, or towers if you like, are equipped with either emergency batteries or diesel generators that'll keep them going, generally for at least a few hours following power loss. And if you've run through all your power packs and the electricity is still not coming on, see if your phone has a power saving mode. An increasing number of devices lets you manually activate a super low power sort of semi-sleep, usually found in the settings menu. It keeps the basic functions running and kills everything else. If you live in a place where power failures are common, you might want to consider getting a phone just for emergencies. That Kyocera Dura XE I used over the summer is a good example of a phone that can survive extreme temperatures, and its waterproof casing isn't going to be bothered by a bit of snow either. What you're looking for is not just the so-called mil-spec rating, but also an IP rating that tells you it's sealed against ingress. The first digit deals with keeping dust out, 6 is the highest you can go. And the second is all about water. A 4, 5, or 6 means it's protected against varying degrees of spray, and a 7 or 8 mean you can submerge it in a meter or more of water. So for phones, an IP68 rating is essentially the best you can do. Whether you go for a super rugged phone or something basic and cheap, store it with care. Remember, it contains a battery too. And make sure it works with the wireless network that has the best coverage in your area. Don't just go by the marketing or what you perceive to be the best. Ask your friends what they use, or take some test drives of your own if you can, because coverage is something that varies significantly from place to place. Also make sure some important numbers are stored in your emergency phone's memory, just in case you can't access data in a crisis. And remember that if a voice call won't go through, oftentimes a text message will. Another thing to keep in mind is that we all take wireless internet for granted these days. When the power goes out, your Wi-Fi router will too. So be prepared to fire up a cellular hotspot, either through a dedicated device or by turning your phone into one. But keep in mind though that throughput won't be the best because the longer the power's out, the more folks will be competing for space on your local cell site. But try to be mindful of that and avoid using data intensive apps or services. My colleague Jerry over at Android Central also recommends having an old-school copper landline in your house if you're in a place that often gets hit by severe weather. If you go that route, remember to write down a few phone numbers on paper in case your device battery dies and you can't get to your phone book. Because, admit it, you don't know anyone's phone number anymore either. And speaking of storing stuff locally, you're going to want to do some downloading ahead of time when you hear that a storm's coming. Save copies of any documents you're working on if you want to make your storm time productive. And a pro tip from Blaze over at Crackberry. If you've deleted useful apps from your phone to save space, it's time to bring them back. Weather apps with radar and satellite feeds are good ones to have, as are local news apps to keep in the loop about what's happening in your city. 
And don't forget about your entertainment either. Netflix, YouTube, Google Play, iTunes, Xbox Store, they all give you at least paid options to store content on your devices to while away the candlelit hours. Finally, and this is more of a mental health suggestion than a survival tip, don't be afraid to unplug for a bit. Many of us spend every waking minute tethered to the collective, so a snow day can be the perfect excuse to log off, close down, and enjoy a candlelit catch-up with your favorite book. What's your suggestion for the best way to prep for a power cut? Share it below and subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss more mobile tech video, stormy or otherwise. Till next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends. Thank you.